Hey, welcome back everyone to the True Champion Steven channel. My name is Steven Rodriguez and I'm here to improve your TCG game. And today we're talking about the world's format. Let's get started. As many of you know, uh, Worlds is actually going to be the actual post rotation. Um, so a lot of tournaments after Worlds are going to be Worlds format, quote unquote. So uh, the top 10 decks that I'm going to be talking about here today and the deck lists that I provide are going to be very useful for upcoming League Cups, League Challenges, as well as even possible regional championships. So definitely make sure that you're paying attention to this video. And if you guys are new here, I do all kinds of deck profiles, meta discussions, just general TCG knowledge and tips. Uh, so if you want to improve your TCG game and become your very own true champion, then why not hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications so that way you guys know when my videos go live for you. And now with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with my top 10 decks for the Pokemon World Championships. All right, everyone, here we are in PTCGDO, and we're going to be getting started with deck number 10. But if you're unfamiliar with how I do the top 10 series here on this channel, what it is is instead of me just giving my opinion about like what I think the best deck is in this format, it's actually a representation of what I think is the most popular and the most powerful decks in the format. So what separates number one from, say, number 10 isn't necessarily, oh, number one's objectively better than number 10. No, no. Number one is objectively more powerful and more popular than number 10. And that's what separates a deck. Number one could have a terrible matchup against, say, number five and number four, but because number one's gonna be so popular given the meta that I'm, you know, foreseeing for the World Championships, that's why it's number one, not necessarily because it's just the best deck. I think the best deck will be the deck that has the best field against these ten, um, which I think is still number one, but I'll get to that when we get to number one and my opinions on the deck. I'll still be uh, providing my own opinions on each of the decks and how good I think they are in the meta, but ultimately my opinion is taken away from their placement on the list. So you're going to hear me say some pretty negative things about pretty much all the decks, but also pretty positive things about all the decks. So if you or someone you know wants to test or play with any of the decks in this top 10, I definitely recommend it because these decks are definitely going to be there. They're definitely going to be prevalent and they definitely have a shot of winning the Pokemon World Championships. Now, not all decks though in the Unified Minds format are going to be talked about on this list because there's literally a lot like there's so many decks in this format right now that I just don't have time to cover all of them for you but if you or someone you know wants to play Moss March wants to play Fossils wants to play Behem wants to play Slowpoke wants to play Quad Keldeo you are more than welcome to do so if you do though I recommend testing against these 10 decks I'm going to show you today and if you have a good matchup against all of them and you have a confident way within the cards in your list to beat them by all means go right ahead and play them at your next league challenge or your next league cup or even the Pokemon World Championships if you're attending if you have any questions for me about any of the decks that I talk about, don't be afraid to leave them down in the comments below or hop into my Twitch channel where I go live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday afternoon, Pacific Standard Time, sometimes on the weekends, and I play a lot of Pokemon TCG online. So don't be afraid to come hang out with me. Links are in the description below. I honestly would just love to see you in there, but I also really love answering questions and I really love playing this game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with deck number 10. All right, everyone, here we are with deck number 10. It's going to be Aegislash. Yes, Aegislash. This deck is a little niche. Um, it's not going to be nearly as popular as many other decks that you're going to see on this top 10 list, but I think it is powerful enough to warrant being on this top 10. Uh, Aegislash is an amazing Pokemon with the abilities Durable, Dur Durable Blade and Trash Slash. Being able to do 130 damage every single turn as early as turn 2 is pretty insane uh, with a non-GX deck. Um, and you just constantly recycle because of card, because of the ability Durablade and because of Recycle Energy, we get to just constantly have a stage two attacker every single turn. And with abilities like Final Hour, Shrine of Punishments, Spell Tags, even the Giant Bomb, the occasional Giant Bomb trigger is super fun. You can just kill Tag Team Pokemon and get some amazing favorable trades as the game goes on. Like imagine attacking six times with 130 damage. Let's do some math. That's, seven, that's 600. That's what? 780 damage, that's enough damage to knock out at least two tag team Pokemon. Boom, game's over. Um, there's a lot of healing in this format as well for other tag team decks, but really, it's no big deal. Being able to do 260, by the way, is really good against Mew Mew. Mew Mew's looking to be very popular. Um, with cards like Duskstone and Rare Candy, like, it really is easy to get Aegislash in play as early as turn two. Uh, with, with, with the Jirachi Engine, you just go through so many item cards so fast. And with the ability to not only to abuse Reset Stamp, like, multiple times in a game but be able to orangaroo them back in the deck and use them again and again because you have that much time given that you're a pure non-gx deck it really can just take advantage of your opponent some downsides of this deck obviously are there's only really one attacker in the deck and that's aegislash um but you can do kind of cute things like memory energy and aegislash use tool drop dual blade boom one shot something because they didn't realize how many tool cards were in play 
on both their side and your side. We have counter gain too, so we can use like free stuff as well as use tool drop earlier. Um, the deck is kind of busted and I really do like it a lot. But like I said, there's no way it's going to be super popular. If you play against one, that's probably the only one you're ever going to play against. Um, but I think it is so powerful and so versatile and actually has a lot of good matchups in this uh, format right now that it's definitely uh, worth testing against or even testing yourself. So uh, that's why it's coming in at number 10. It's not the most popular deck in the world, but it's definitely powerful and should definitely be respected. Moving on to deck number 9. Speaking of non-GX decks that I really love, here is Bray Loom. Um, Bray Loom is probably my favorite non-GX deck in this current format, and I really love playing with it. Uh, this version that you're seeing here is Frostlass, Bray Loom, Hoopa. Um, it's kind of like a, a trifecta of really good non-GX attackers for this format. You have the Fighting Attacker, Bray Loom, to deal with Picaram. You got the Water Attacker, Frostlass, to deal with Richard's Art. And, and you have the Dark Attacker, Hoopa, to deal with Malamar which are the big three decks in this format right now. Uh, you also deal really well with, with, with Dark Box, obviously, with Bray Loom, but that's, you know, easy. Uh, uh, there is another version of Bray Loom that plays Amoongus, um, but it doesn't play Frostlass or Hoopa, or at very least high numbers, and I don't like not being able to play these amazing tech Pokemon in my Bray Loom deck, so that's why I'm, I'm opting for this version, but the other version is also worth testing as well. Um, the reason why this deck isn't any higher on the list is because it lacks... There's just some really tough um, hands with this deck sometimes. It gets really hard to streamline attackers or even get certain combos because you think, oh, the Mareep, you know, Bray Loom engine is so consistent and so annoying. Yeah, it kind of is, but like if you ever miss like a start of Mareep, it's kind of hard to get it in there. I definitely recommend trying to fit in like one or two switch as well as the three U-turn board because I'm really missing um, some mobility in this deck. We're playing the tag team Pokemon Bar Buzzwell Ferramosa because Beast Game is busted. As well, it's kind of nice to get some early jet punches against stuff um, that is like, like niche. So like Malamar, it's really helpful kind of to snipe other Malamars or Inkes. And it's just kind of nice because uh, 120 damage flat on Bray Loom isn't the best against other non-GX decks because obviously like like for example Hoopa has 130 HP um, so you want to be able to kind of get better numbers against other non-GX decks and by also having Beast Game you can like cheese a, an extra prize card or two against those decks which is kind of nice. We're playing the uh, the Absol in here to deal with Jirachi based decks, uh, Diancie to boost our damage output and of course Ditto to be Ditto and have all this versatility. Uh, the deck is really awesome in that it is a non-GX deck, like I said, that has an amazing type coverage against all the decks pretty much in the format that are very big. But another cool thing it does is it's kind of high rolly. Like if you get pretty, like if you get a really high rolly game with Bray Loom, like you're gonna win that game because Slumbering Forest is just a busted stadium card. And being able to abuse this for like one or two turns and force an, uh, like a Mew Mew to stay asleep so that way you can like three shot it is super hilarious because sometimes you can't always get Diancie and Mew Mew is kind a really tough deck to kind of like consistently beat but if you get like a little bit of high rolly it can definitely can happen um some bad matchups are of course shit ninja which we're gonna which we're gonna talk about pretty soon um mew mew can get awkward because they can snipe stuff also you don't one shot them at all in this deck so for being forced to like pre pre uh pre non strike into you know sightful sigh is kind of tough um hoopa is helpful because he can like three shot them which is super cool and they can't always one shot hoopa unless they get have the rushes are build and then funny stuff happens it's a it's it, 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 it's 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 an awkward match to say, to say the least um but i definitely recommend testing this deck i definitely recommend testing against it and seeing how many coins you can flip heads because like the like like the sleep abuse in this deck with the lack of guzma and kind of the lack of Hardcore switching cards like switch is kind of amazing, but I will say that another big thing that you that you hate is decks that play um, oh, What's it called mixed herbs mixed herbs is a really devastating thing for this deck because not only being able to heal The Pokemon's really bad because you two shot a lot of stuff in this format But being able to just like get out of sleep is kind of annoying uh, And that's why we're playing the frost last because you know rushes plays mixed herbs So you want to be able to just one shot the rushes instead of kind of partially deal with it um, but I will say this deck is super fun, really good. Um, you might want to think about playing a Mew, uh, a Bench Barrier Mew, because Picaromp isn't as free as you would think it is, because sometimes they play a copy of Mew Mew, which if they do, it's kind of tough to get around a Tag Bolt turn, um, because you don't play any custom catchers, so, like, you... Their like Picarom always just sits on the bench or in the discard pile, and they use Mew Mew, and they can use Tag Bolt GX, which is actually a pretty devastating attack for this deck because they can get rid of your whole entire combo in one turn, which if they do is really bad. So definitely consider playing a Bench Barrier Mew to help the Picarom match Picarom matchup just a little bit more. But other than that, I think it's really fun. I actually think it's pretty consistent, and despite like what other people say, and I definitely recommend playing it. It's a really awesome deck. The reason why it's not any higher is because it's not really doing anything outright powerful. Like if like if a big time Water deck comes out. 
for example, like Blastoise or God forbid, Psyduck, Slowpoke. Like if those decks come and you play against them, you kind of like don't really have an answer outside of trying trying to set up a, buzz, a Buzzwell Feromosa, which isn't the best idea. So like really niche things it has trouble with, but like the actual meta as a whole, if we're like predicting the meta to be like Reshazard, Blacephalons, Picaroms, uh, Dark Box, and like Malamar, then you're gonna do great. Um, and, that, and that's why this deck is super powerful. Moving on to uh, deck number eight. Probably the most hated, most talked about, whatever you want to say, deck, Sheninja. Um, this deck is is awful. Don't play it. Please do not play Sheninja at the Pokemon World Championships or any tournaments ever because the deck is... Yes, the deck works still. It, it still. it basically didn't lose anything besides Gladion, which to me is bad enough, by the way. But it did lose Gladion. It lose some ways to search for Pokemon. But the deck does work. It does everything it still needs to do. You got your annoying Sheninja or Rangaroo loop package. You got your Persians to discard your opponent's hand if they're trying to just stockpile cards in their hand. You got your Hapus to make yourself super consistent. You got your Fire, Recycle Energies. Recycle Energies is actually a really big inclusion to this deck because it means you don't need to play as many energies anymore. And you can just constantly recycle your energies with Orangaroo. You got Brock's Grit. So that way you can constantly recycle Shininzas, all fun stuff like that. You play Champions Festival, so that way you, get, you can get around things like Spell Tag and just like niche damage here and there. Deck does work. Deck is kind of really good. But it is impossible to win a, a, a three series with this deck if you ever lose game one. If you just get slightly unlucky and prize, I don't know, prize your Mars, prize your... Like, like, like prizing two Shininjas is really bad. Um, prizing... Uh, your Meowth and your Ditto prizing, like you, like you can just like awkward things prized, which is just n not fun. Um, but the deck does work and the deck does win, which is annoying. But a lot of people are expecting this deck. If any deck plays counter custom catchers and plays a Rangaroo, you're kind of like going to lose. Um, also, it can just kind of like reset stamp both helps it and hurts it. We're not playing reset stamp in this list right now. You could easily play reset stamp. I don't think you should, but you can um, because your idea is like it doesn't matter if they have like a broken card in their hand. If they're at one prize card left, they shouldn't be able to take a prize card anyway, so it doesn't matter. You know, it's stuff like that, but whatever. Um, yes, the deck can infinite loop. Yes, it still works. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, we need answers to it. There are answers to it. Like, I guess you could, you could still play Farfetch'd or Faba, but I don't think decks are going to do that because the deck isn't going to be popular enough to warrant teching against. But it is a thing. If you want to test it, by all means, go ahead and do so. That's your right. It's going to be there. We all know it's going to be there. But will it do well? Not in my opinion. I think this deck is horrible. I do not think even the most skilled players in the world, if they play this deck, might just fall flat in their face because everyone's going to be like, really? And people can just tie against you, by the way. People, people can just, you, you get so many ties with this deck that it's not worth it to play it. It just isn't. So please do not play Sheninja. But it is going to be there, and you should definitely test against it if you haven't already. And then go take a shower and wash the filth off yourself because that was not a fun game for anybody. <laughs> Moving on to deck number seven. All right, uh, probably the most hyped deck right now, I think, in the Pokemon world. Like, everyone's talking about Malamar and how broken it is. Um, personally, I don't think Malamar is that great of a deck at all right now. I don't think I don't think it wins nearly as much as people say it does. I know there's some diehard Malamar fans out there that are like disliking this video or clicking on subscribe right now. I'm sorry. I play Malamar too. Don't worry. I'm, I'm with you. Like it's a great deck. It really does work. It's got amazing consistency. It lost like nothing in the post rotation because it gets to keep mysterious treasure. Um, but frankly, I don't I don't really like any of the versions. Like Garchomp Giratina tag team is pretty fun. Um, Ultra Necrozma still does Ultra Necrozma things, but Frankly, I think the best one is the non-GX version, uh, Giratina, just like Onslaught build, um, but with Deoxys, of course, uh, because spread damage is really good right now because there's not that much healing, um, unless like you're playing against like a, a stall deck, which if you are, you're going to beat them anyway because you're a non-GX deck. Um, I do think it's the best non-GX deck right now because it's the most consistent one. Um, I think a lot of people are going to play it, um, but I don't think it's that powerful. Like, I, don't, I don't even think it really beats Reshazard or... Pikaram that much. I, I, I still don't see how it beats Pikaram to be honest with you besides like having a Mew Mew Sorry by having Mew, but I do see how it beats Mew Mew. I do see how it doesn't how does it beat Dark Box? How does it beat Dark Box? Like tell me someone tell me how this deck beats Dark, beats Dark Box, um, please um, But it's really cool Power Plant's busted by the way, so play Power Plant if you're not playing it I know a lot of people aren't which I don't understand but Power Plant is so good It really helps against Pikaram as well, which is just awesome um but yeah, the deck is just super consistent. This is a really consistent spell tag list. I definitely recommend playing it and testing with it if you haven't already. It's going to be 
there's going to be so many Malamars at events within the next like coming months that if you're not testing against Malamar or you have no idea how this matchup goes for whatever deck you're playing, I definitely recommend that you do it. Throw some custom catchers in there, chase Malamars all day, and have a, a grand old time. Um, be careful when you play Viridian Forest on your side. Don't just give them free Viridian Forest. Make it make them work for it. And uh, make sure you count how much damage counters are left, on, are left on your opponent's board because um, this does sneak up on people. Uh, this cross division GX deck, it sneaks up on people. It's pretty, it's pretty devastating actually to uh, like kill four things with uh, this Pokemon. It's, it's pretty dumb. Um, but that's it for uh, Malamar. There's not, there's not really much to say here besides I don't like it that much, but it's really good. Like I don't like it, but it's really good, right? Like that's what, like that's just the truth here. Is that this deck is great if it's your cup of tea and you're consistent and you uh, and, and, and you're competent in it and you have a list that you're proud of and you know how to win against pretty much every deck in the format. Then by all means, play it. But for me, this is not uh, at all what I would play if I was going to the Pokemon World Championships. But give it a shot. It's definitely worth testing against, though. However, which is why it's on the top ten. All right, everyone, probably the most meme deck, but the one that I'm most excited for on this list is deck number six, and that's Whimsicott. And now I'm just gonna say. Plain, plain simple here. If you're worried about Whimsicott, just play Power Plant in your deck and you'll be fine. But if you don't play Power Plant, you should definitely be weary of this deck because this deck gained something crazy in this new set, and that was Recycle Energy. And by having Recycle Energy in this deck, being able to just have basically four cards come back to your hand whenever your Whimsicott GX dies is is insane. Uh, the damage cap for this deck is basically non-existent, which is the biggest selling point for Whimsicott right now, and why I think it is so powerful, because it is the fairy Blacephalon. It can just one-shot anything in its path, and the crazy part is, your opponent has to get lucky if they're gonna be able to kill it. Like, that is insane. Like, unless you're playing against a Reshazar deck, or a deck that plays like four power plant, you really have nothing to worry about. Also, it, it kind of auto-wins matchups too, in the fact that you have, you know, fairy charms, you have your ability, and you're a fairy type Pokemon, so dark types kind of don't scare you at all. Like, imagine a Darkrai GX having to flip not only to, to, to do damage to your active Whimsicott, but also to your benched one, and when it hits the active one, luckily, it takes resisted damage, and if it doesn't hit the benched one, like, are you picturing what I'm talking about? Like, it's kind of insane. Uh, this deck is really fun. Uh, like I said, Power Plant is a big thorn in its side, but there's ways around it. You play Reset Stamp, you play Viridian Forest. No deck really plays more than three Power Plants, so if you just hold your hold your stadiums to when you need them, it's pretty useful. We're playing the Viridian Engine because you there's no really, there's really there's really no other better stadium, and we can just like search for our fairies whenever we need them. Uh, the deck is super fun. Porygon's a busted card. Crazy Code's really cool. Don't be afraid that to attack with Porygon, by the way, whenever you need to. Uh, that's kind of your best way to beat Keldeo decks, for example. Um, Definitely, I'm in love with this deck. I think it's really powerful. And if you haven't tested with Whimsicott, or at the very least against Whimsicott, I highly recommend you do so because you might just be uh, more afraid of it. <laughs> you might just be. Um, you can also play a Lily Engine in the deck that's even more aggressive than this one. This is an Elms version. I think Elms is more consistent. And in my mind, why be aggressive and aggressive when you can be consistent and aggressive, right? So, yeah, this deck is crazy. Uh, it's better than Guardian, in my opinion. Also, it's so powerful that it has to be in the top 10. But, again, people are a little afraid of flip coiny decks, and everyone that's going to the World Championships is, is quote-unquote, a good player. So, they're going to be playing consistent decks. So, a, a coin flippy deck isn't that consistent. So, why would I play it? Well, you play it because on the slight chance that you're high rolling, you're going to be winning a lot of games. Uh, so, yeah, definitely test against it. Or, better yet, play it and have some fun. Uh, moving on to deck number five. All right, moving on to probably the most hyped deck in the Unified Minds set itself, we've got Mew Mew Box. Uh, this deck is pretty insane. It has the most versatile set of Pokemon and set of attackers that is just insane. There's so many other attackers you could play. You could play Altaria GX, like a Mina engine build, and just be an invincible monster. Uh, you could play, I think I think there was like a funny version, like a tank version of Mew Mew, and you played like Greninja GX, and you would like, what, what whatever Greninja GX's attack is, not, not this one, the other Greninja GX, the one from the set, and you would like shuffle them back in, and then he would heal all the damage. It's kind of crazy, and like you would send up like other Pokemon that like are pretty resisted, like safeguarders, like maybe Keldeo or something. Um, really cool, but this is the version we're playing. We're playing the Reshazard Welder version because I think it's the most consistent one. It's also the best one because uh, you have access to amazing attacks like Sky Judgment, um, Double Blaze, Flare Strike, or even Mist Slash. Um, Mist Slash, Mist Slash is amazing because it's a um, shred attack that does 130, and sometimes you can use Greninja GX to actually draw cards. So shout out to Greninja GX here. I forgot this Pokemon card even existed. Um, but, but we also play the staples, you know, Jirachi GX. We play our Dedenne so we can discard a Pokemon. We play our three Mew Mew. 
Dex busted. Uh, we have Hapu's in there as well, so that we can discard more Pokemon or more just better better things. We play Tag Switch and Welder because the, like, there's so many tag teams in this deck. Uh, there's actually well there's, well, there's only two, but there's so many good attackers in this deck. So being able just to move energies around is super awesome. You got your four Rainbow, eight Fire. The deck works, and it's really good. Um, this is like the poster trial for Unified Minds, but I don't think it's the best deck out of Unified Minds by any means. It's very powerful and has amazing combos, but I think it won't be as popular as people think because everyone and their mother is afraid of Malamar. So no one's gonna really play this deck unless they have a list that beats Malamar, uh, which if they do, power to them, good, go have some fun and kick some butt. Um, but if they don't have a list that beats Malamar, I have no idea how this deck beats Malamar, um, which is why it's gonna be not popular, which is then why it's lower on the list and not number one. But the deck is really powerful, has amazing combo potential, and can literally do like anything it wants and work. So that's awesome. We're playing the draw changer, by the way, still, because Lily sucks and you want to play Jirachi. So yeah. <laughs> Moving on to deck number four. Well, moving on, we have a pretty interesting deck. That's all I'll say about it is Dark Box. So Dark Box is one of those decks that not only do I love this deck, I love playing with it. IRL. I, I don't I, I didn't test this deck on PDCGO, so that's why you don't see the cards for it. I haven't I have it IRL though, which is where I tested this one. But what is really cool about Dark Box, that I don't think a lot of people talk about, is that you can literally build a, like anything you want. Like this deck can do everything. It can spread, it can just cheese, uh, it can mill, it can uh, accelerate like no one's business. Like the deck is so versatile that it is so powerful. Um, and it's so and it's, and it's gonna be really popular because people love their dark Pokemon, especially when they can play a lot of dark Pokemon. Um, the list I'm playing currently is kind of your standard dark box, but I'm playing like a really uber consistent version where I play like fan club and a bunch of draw supporters, even copycat. Yes, copycat's really good this format. If you haven't tried it, test it out and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, we're playing the acceleration of Rayquaza GX as well as Naganadel, plus Dark Arpism Star. Busted, busted card. Um, Abyssal Sleep, by the way, super busted as well. Th th this is the reason why I'm not playing uh, non GX Hoopa, uh, because you don't need to, but if you wanted to, you could play Evil Abdomission Hoopa as like another non GX attacker if you're afraid of Keldeo GX, but I'm not afraid of Keldeo GX, so we're playing this and just this. I'm playing Greedy Zoroark so you can one shot stuff because people for some reason think you can't one shot stuff. I'm playing Hoopa GX because Rogue Ring is busted. Also, Devilish Hands GX is probably. Well, it's my third favorite GX attack of this deck, but it's really good and definitely recommend using it. Dark Strike is really helpful as well. Uh, we got Sableye Tyranitar because busted. Uh, we got a 3 2 Sneasel Weavile. This is the best Sneasel. Play this one. Don't play any, any other one or else you're stupid. And of course, we got two Umbreon Darkrai, the, probably the best card in this deck, uh, to say the least. We got four Super Scoop Up. I love playing this card again. Um, because it, it like 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 this deck reminds me of old school Aromatis um, from XY, which is the first deck that I started playing when I ever played this game. So it's it's really nice, and plus it's it's, it's with my favorite type in this game, which is dark. So yeah, um, we have a bunch of search cards: Cherish Ball, Mysterious Treasure, Pokecom. I'm overly explaining this one because this is like a newer newer deck and a deck that I put a lot of testing in, and it's just crazy. Another fun thing you can play, and I'll mention it just because it's so busted. I haven't really put that much testing into it, but none of the people know that you can do this. Um, oh, do I not? I I, I, have, I have some on here, right? I should have Incineroar. Yeah, I don't. Okay, cool. So you can play a C Incineroar GX, and you can put it into play with Dark Union GX, which is busted because you can add any Dark Pokemon. It doesn't have to be a GX. It uh, doesn't have to be a, a basic Pokemon. So you can put this into play using Dark Union, and that's busted. So being able to do that and get three dark energies every single turn, you immediately just turn on your entire deck, or you also play a heavier version of Dragon Zoroark, and then you just blow up stuff, which is super fun. So definitely recommend trying that out. Um, it's pretty fun and high rolly, and I like that. <laughs> but this deck is really powerful. My biggest problem with it, though, is that look at all these Pokemon we play. We play a bunch of one-ofs, we play a lot of stuff that's all over the place, so it has a tendency to get kind of clunky in the hand. Um, and if you miss like your heads on scoop ups, like you can just get behind the prize trade pretty early, which is pretty bad. Um, also, it's hard to beat decks that you can't one shot, which is why you kind of have to play Greninja Zoroark. And if you ever prize your Greninja Zoroark against like Reshazard or Pikaram, you don't have the best time 
it's not like that easy to beat them uh, if you prize your Greninja Zoroark. So definitely be weary, like there's some awkward prizing things that can happen. You play a lot of one-ofs, so you need to really know your deck. Um, and that's why I think a lot of players are going to be afraid to play this deck within the first couple of weeks because there's no like perfect list yet. No one's ever made the best 60. There's a bunch of different ways you can play it. There's custom catcher builds. There's really aggressive like quad. I think I've seen quad Rayquaza or something like that. Some, something, something stupid like that. Uh, there's Sharpedo builds. Don't play that. They're not going to those better. Uh, but yeah, this deck is crazy. Uh, there's so many ways to play it, which I think kind of deters from its popularity, which is why it's lower on the list than, say, any of the other ones. But it's really powerful, and that has a lot of options. And options equals, you know, uh, game strategy. And game strategy equals equals winning. And winning is nice. So moving on to deck number three. All right, here we are with deck number three, Rushy Blounds. Uh, this deck, I believe, was created by Peter Kika, but uh, I think it kind of existed before that as well. But whatever. Uh, Blacephalon... Uh, is going to be a deck. Either it's this version or it's the Naganadel version, uh, also with Persian. Um, I think this one is better, though, which is why I'm going to be showing you guys this one instead of the other one. I think this deck is super powerful. Blacephalon is still doing Blacephalon things in this format. You have Welder, you still have Beastring, you have Persian, and you have Green's Exploration. Like, this deck just gets super nuts. Um, and also, being a pure GX deck is kind of nice. It's also kind of not nice, because while Blacephalon doesn't really have an answer to non-GX stuff like you know, Malamar and Breloom, this one kind of does in the fact that it plays Regizard because you can kind of just like, after like, say they knock out two Blacephalon GX, you just camp a, Re a Regizard in there and take three knockouts in a row, you kind of just win the game, which is great. And that's what the value of Regizard is in this deck. It, it, it adds an attacker that you don't need to constantly keep setting up every single turn, which is what Blacephalon is. So it lets you not only mitigate your resources and keep better track of them, it also just kind of serves as a big old tank in the deck that you can play either early or late. Uh, I like playing it late. And having the 2-1 Persian is just busted, so that's nice as well. So this deck is super consistent, Blounce has been uber popular ever since it first came out in Lost Thunder, and it's gonna get even more popular because it, there's so many tag team decks in this format right now, whether it's Rushizard, whether it's Picaram, whether it's Mew Mew, that Blacephalon has a lot of value right now and a lot of popularity. So not only is this deck super powerful, but it's also really popular and that's why it's super high on the list. But it's such a known thing and it really does fear Malamar that I feel like a lot of players are going to be afraid to really commit to it, which is again why it's slightly less than number one. However, if Malamar wasn't a deck this format, this would probably be my number one pick um, for Worlds, no questions asked. Um, but with all that being said, moving on to deck number two. All right. You guys knew I was going to talk about it. I knew I was going to talk about it. We knew it was going to be a deck. Welcome to Picaram. Um, if you, uh, you're going to notice a trend here within the top like three or four, three three decks really, in that the best three decks are the most known ones, or should I say the ones that lost the least from post rotation. Um, not only is Picaram a known deck in that it was it existed and did super well last format, it's also a deck that lost so little from the rotation. Like, I, what, what did it lose? It lost Ultra Ball, Nest Ball, and, I mean, besides Choice Band, um, Escape Rope, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> like, everything else it still has, which is just insane. And the deck is still super versatile, has amazing, amazing combos, and is just busted. Uh, this list that I'm showing you here isn't like a cut and dry list. I think it's actually a little bit obscure because I'm playing, you know, the Mew Mew. I'm still playing the 220 Aurora. I couldn't find my second one on here for some reason, so whatever. And yeah, it's pretty busted. Uh, I really like it. Uh, the inclusion of Raichu Raichu as like a big, big knockout or just having Tandem Shock be busted because Guzman, Guzman no longer exists is super fun. Um, I think great potions are valid in this deck and I could definitely see people trying to add some. Like you could cut like an Acro Bike. You could cut Red's Challenge for like two great potion. Definitely worth it in my opinion. So definitely try testing that as well. Uh, three to Dene is just busted. Uh, Zapdos and Coco are really great non-jix attackers as well as just really good engines in the deck. Uh, the deck is uber aggressive, really consistent. Probably the most consistent deck out of all of them on this list, and it's going to be at the Pokemon World Championships. Hell, it might even win the Pokemon World Championships, and that's why it's number two. The deck is still super powerful. Tag Bolt is busted. Um, now having access to Mew Mew as an alternate tag team Pokemon, uh, sorry, Tag Bolt Pokemon, as well as Tandem Shock, and kind of just like another attacker with another typing is crazy. Like, we have Psychic typing now in this deck. Being able to to tag, being, being able to uh, full blitz an opposing Mew Mew with your own Mew Mew is busted. So definitely keep that in mind. And then going 
into a three uh, electro power tag bolt to win the game against Mew Mew is pretty busted. So definitely recommend playing that. I am playing one Oranguru in here because like I said, Oranguru is a busted tech in this format and should be played in almost any deck that has the room for it. But in this deck partic in particular, it's super busted because imagine like, I don't know, being a, a little aggressive and like using, instead of using full blitz, you use tag bolt and like triple E power to knock out a Rushizard and then you have no tagging Pokemon in play, they kill your Pikaram, you bring up Oranguru, you use Oranguru's attack, resource management, to put back your three E-powers, and then somehow on your next turn, you just bust out another like full blitz or a tandem shock, and you go triple E-power, blow up your blow up your opponent's Pokemon again. Like that's pretty crazy. Um, so I definitely recommend testing out Oranguru or testing out Oranguru in this deck. Definitely adds a lot of value to it for sure. And this deck is super powerful and it's, and it's going to be super popular. So definitely test against it if you haven't already. And now with all that being said, moving on to my number one deck for the Pokemon World Championships. You've heard me say it once. You've heard me say it time and time again. Green's Reshizard is the best way to play Reshizard. And that's why it's number one. This deck is crazy. The best thing that, Resh that Green's Reshi has going for it right now is the tech ability. You can play so many things in this deck right now and it still works. You play Healing Out the Wazoo with Great Potion and Mixed Herbs. You play so many Stadium cards in Power Plant, Giant Hearth, Heat Factory, and Shrine of Punishments. Shout out to Rahul Ready, by the way, for showing me that you can play this card in this deck and use it against Picaroms. So that way you can one-shot Picaroms and they have no idea you could one-shot Picaroms. Super, super busted. Uh, Volcanion's a busted card. Being able to play a Ranguru as well so you can reuse your custom catchers or your crystals or your mixed herbs is insane and this deck is just super crazy it's uber consistent it's going to be super popular because it's rushes art and rushes art is always going to be popular as long as it's out because it can do 230 damage as early as turn two which is busted and of course it is the most powerful version of any deck right now because like i said it can heal it can one shot and of course it sets up like no one's business. Like, like if you go second, you don't even need a greens or a welder. Like, if you go second and start Volcanion, all you need is a fire energy and a cherish ball, and the deck is is working. Like, it's doing everything it needs to do. Um, I will say that there are some consistency is consistency issues. If you don't start a greens and you say you're going first, that could be pretty sucky. But I've tested enough hands to know that three, uh, or should I say four, four, four of all the cards you need is enough. Like, it, it, it'll it work. It'll work for you in like a nine round tournament of any kind, even if it's the World Championships. I think this deck is super cool, has amazing matchups against the field. It can win against any deck. Um, it can even play techie things like Surge to, to try and have a comeback factor. You can like cut the choice helmets and like play like more power plants or even more Cherish Balls to make yourself more consistent. It beats um, what's the what's the word? Mew Mew. It beats non GX deck. That's non GX decks that, that try to counter it. The only way you can really beat this deck is by playing a Frostlass in your deck, and not every deck has the space to do that. So it's definitely uh, worth playing for the Pokemon World Championships. It's definitely worth testing against, and it's definitely worth um, being number one on this list. Again, <laughs> I know my last top ten. I'm pretty sure uh, Re Re Green Sushi was number one, but purely because you could just do some amazing busted things with it. Because Mixed Herbs was, was a new thing at that time, and Mixed Herbs is still busted. Also, I will state that because I'm playing a Ranguru in my list, and not every Registrar is playing it, um, the Mirror Match is actually a lot better for us if you play a Ranguru because it's very resource heavy, believe it or not, because you can't one-shot an opposing Registrar, so you have to like always soften it up with like a uh, an outrage like if you don't have your double blaze set up to go just one shot one you can't kill one so it's kind of nice to have this oranguru here so when you get into a grind game with your opponent you have more resources than, than they do so you can custom catch your things you can lock stuff in the active you can heal more than they can so eventually you'll be able to one shot them and they won't be able to one shot you um it's just like a neat little kind of back and forth that the decks have so yeah this deck is probably the most powerful the most consistent and of course the most popular deck moving into the Pokemon World Championships. Everyone and their mom is talking about how good this deck is. So if you're not testing against it or you're not playing with it, you might be making a mistake because it, it it's pretty good. It's a really good deck and I definitely recommend you play with it, play against it, and um, consider trying to find a way to beat it that is outside the realm of playing water attackers or hoping that they, that they um, dead draw off of your reset stand. Because a lot of the time, 
It doesn't even matter if they dead draw off your reset stamp. When their board is set up with two Rishes Arts and two Volcanians, they're good to go. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind. Um, but anywho, guys, that'll be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any, if you had any questions about the decks that I showed you guys here today, or the or the lists, or even my kind of thoughts about the format moving forward, don't be afraid to ask them down in the comments below, or message me on Twitter or Instagram. My my DMs are always open, and I love ask, answering people's questions. I also offer coaching services as well. So if you're an up and coming Pokemon player and you want to get better in this new realm of post rotation, don't be afraid to check my email down in the description below. I always answer as early as I can. And of course, I'm always open to working with new talent. But of course, with all that being said, as always, I have been your true champion, Steven. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had a wonderful day. Always remember to work hard, rest easy, and live well. And I'll see you all next time. Peace out. <laughs>